today is the day. We are ready. Ready to go. So we will be pro sealing the uh, trailing edge here on the rudder. Um, so yeah, we're all ready. We kind of rehearsed it a couple of times. I have angle iron down there. Uh, that'll be here to support this on the edge. And yeah, we're ready to make a mess and smell the wonderful smells of Pro Seal. Um, there's not many good videos out there on how to actually mix it, but I don't think I can get it wrong. <laughs> I, I think it's, anyways, comes in a container like this. Uh, this is from Vans, it's the medium sized kit. Um, but I think the whole idea is you use this rod here to plunge the activator material into here. And then it says to shake it violently like you're shaking a baby. Um, so it says to 50 strokes. It doesn't take a long time. It says, supposedly, you push this rod. It says you may need to bop it. Pro Seal is all done. I put the leftover Pro Seal in the freezer. Supposedly you can keep it for a longer, uh, keep the, uh, the mixed up Pro Seal for a long time in the freezer. So store it in there and happy with the results here. So I had a little bit of squeeze out, but I just cleaned it up with a little bit of acetone, uh, but it wasn't too much. I think I put the right amount of Pro Seal there. I've seen, um, I've seen some people have it where it's like gobs and gobs of Pro Seal coming out the, coming out the, uh, the edge there. I think I did the right amount here. Maybe I did a little bit under, I don't know. In the instructions, it does have in all caps, it says uh, something, along, something along the lines of a very thin coat. Um, or all caps and underline, thin coat. So I think I did a thin coat, uh, just with the minimal amount of squeezing that I did have there. Uh, but next up, we'll get to riveting uh, this side here. And then we'll be done for a couple of days here while we let this thing cure. All right, Pro Seal, I think, is uh, plenty cured to move forward. It's had five or six full days to, to get cured up. It's been, I think, like 60, 70 degrees ish in the garage here. I think it's been enough time. Um, I had a little side piece here just to kind of feel where the pro seal is at um, so I don't have to mess with this. And um, this thin layer is definitely uh, cured enough there. It's not really sticking to my skin too much there. And then uh, this little glob here, it's still squishy, which I was reading online. Uh, it'll kind of stay like this uh, squishy texture uh, for a bit until it fully, fully cures over a couple of weeks. So I think we'll have a, a, a plenty enough time uh, to move forward with the process, I think in the plans it said to let it wait a few days. So we're beyond a few days. So I'm going to get these Clicos removed here. I'll try to clean them up as much as I can during the process since quite a bit of uh, Pro Seal did get on. So I'll clean those up and get forward and move it on to uh, getting the rivets all, uh, all put on. So we will jump on into things here. Alrighty, that should be all of them. So we'll see how, uh, how stuck on this is.
definitely stuck to it. Cool, it worked. The keyboard was hanging on here. Um, just those overflow sections were uh, hanging on to it. Alrighty, it's another day. Went ahead the other day and finished up riveting uh, this back portion here. Nothing too eventful or content worthy. Um, I did some bucking back here uh, for this top rib, uh, but today will be a little bit more fun. All right, so I'm gonna interrupt this time lapse real quick here. Um, nothing too too exciting, but I did make two discoveries here. Um, number one is how you tape your bucking bar. It really does matter. I had previously only taped, um, I guess just the just the corners themselves, but not um, not the true hard corners here. So you'll see along where I did primer it, um, it was digging in pretty hard. So I will have to do a little touch up of primer over afterwards. But I went ahead and retaped it. I know this is probably super, uh, super elementary, but something that is new to me it is actually built up kind of like a shield around where where the rivet goes. I know it's going to land in here, um, and I and I put extra tape in those corners there and really really beefed it up. But you'll see the rivet's impact right here in the middle. So probably really self-explanatory. But you'll see where I didn't do this uh, was there 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 and there but in the other rivets that i've set it only just barely scuffs the primer to where i won't have to reprimer it um, so if you're any builders out there looking to, to know how to tape your tungsten bar as simple as that seems try doing it this way uh, it worked out really well um, and the other thing that i learned i had a lot of a lot of hesitation i think a lot of builders out there have a lot of hesitation too with bucking versus squeezing uh, where you see it as kind of a a pain in the butt to do because it's not super consistent. It uh, comes down to uh, your your own, uh, I guess, body reflexes or whatever versus uh, a machine that you can calibrate. But I took some extra time just now and got the pressure down to a consistent amount and then really, really fine-tuned um, this uh, regulator here to where now it's really easy to do and kind of, uh, yeah, it's really fun to do. So you'll hear in the sound of it, I basically uh, brought down to the pressure to where, um, to where it's more noticeable when it gets to the point when it's ready. So probably hard to explain, but I'm going to do one real quick for you here and just listen to the sound of how it dies off. At that point where it dies off is at the point where it matches the tool. So I'll, I'll shut up here and uh, show you what I'm talking about, but just listen to the sound of it. So that sound there where it kind of died off and you heard it um, get more quiet, I guess less blows per second. Anyways, if I go back, I can't even find it because they all match the same. But anyways, take my word for it. I think I was somewhere in here, but they're all the same. Um, but they all end up very, very consistent if you kind of listen to that sound of, of the gun dying off with the amount of air pressure in the line. Um, so it made this way more enjoyable. I hated bucking the last uh, few sections that I had to buck and now I can see how if you have the gun tuned in and you have you have an idea of, of what you're doing um, they all end up really really consistent you'll see here that they all uh, none of them go inside of it um, and they all meet the uh, meet the depth requirement there uh, so yeah tune in your gun get it taped up so you don't scuff everything and uh, those are my two uh, Two trick tips of the day that I have learned so far. So I'll shut up now and get back to the time lapse. Alrighty, so I'm incredibly pleased with the results from uh, this, this uh, trailing edge here. Um, you'll see it is nice and straight, which is beautiful. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, it's pretty exciting. I know there's a couple of methods to do this. I went ahead, I, I tried previously to do the uh, the bucking method um, that Vans outlines in their manual, uh, but I ended up actually having a lot of success and consistency using the, I believe the Cle Cleveland, Aircla eh, Cleveland Aircraft Tools um, little attachment, which if I can get my life together. Oh, there it is. Cool, so it's already on here currently. So. Anyways, it's a little spring-loaded attachment. I'll see if I can pull it out here real quick. Um, but what it does, it has, 
has the angle of the, of the trailing edge um, built into these dies here. So you don't actually use this for the whole time. You actually start out with a uh, standard head, get it partially started, partially squeezed to where it's gonna hold itself in there, and then you transition over to these. I, at least that's my method. Um, this is not a how-to guide, it's just the way I did things. So yeah, I started it out with the, with the basic dies, got a nice little squeeze on it to get it pillowed and started, and went after it with this afterwards, uh, which matches the angle. And yeah, really, really happy with the results. One thing that I did have to do for my oops, uh, rivets where I made the mistakes there 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 and there is those if you recall from a previous video those had to be sized up to a uh, size 4 so the 4264 versus the 4263 so interesting thing here is I couldn't find any supplier for the same length rivet so this is the what it calls for originally without making an oopsie mistake is the 4263 dash 3.5 so three width three and a half length so i had to get sized up to a four so the larger rivet uh, but they don't make a 4264 dash 3.5 um, so what i had to do because if it's if it ends up being too long it could fold over or have issues stand out too much didn't want to have issues so um, i went ahead and used this is not the exact rivet but you'll get a, a good idea here uh, but i went ahead and used this scrap piece here loaded it inside there get my life together here anyways loaded it inside there it came after it with a file and slowly took away material um, I saw I was originally going to use a grinder to do it but then I saw some people online said that you may run into issues with it um, I guess tempering or getting hot um, so yeah went after it with a file it's really easy to file down and filed it down over and over again smoothed it smoothed out the edges and got it to be the same length as that 3.5 and then went ahead to the same process of squishing it first a little bit just to set it and then going after it uh, with the angle deal and yeah i'm happy with the, with the results it's not the prettiest thing on the other side which i think even in the manual it mentions that it's not going to be perfect i didn't get any kind of warping going on during the process not sure if you can see there or not but really nice and straight uh, pro seal held up really well it's nice rubber consistency um, and it, yeah, just really held on to it and made a perfect edge. So I was really uh, not looking forward to this leading edge here just with my mistakes that I had to fix and whatnot. Um, yeah, super happy. And you'll see they do blend in pretty nicely. There's one of the 1 8 rivets. Oh, you'll see them with the stars there. And they, uh, they blend in just like the other. So I'm, I'm really happy. It's a good day. Alrighty, I don't have any super close-up footage here bending this leading edge. I lost a lot of <laughs> a lot of footage during the process. I think in the next clip here, you'll notice I don't have audio either. Um, so hopefully the next video is a little bit better. Um, but this was pretty straightforward. I used a piece of PVC pipe on that skin, uh, duct taped it to it, and slowly bent it using a pair of uh, locking vice grips on one side and channel locks on the other, just making sure not to let it slip and impact the skin, uh, which didn't happen. Actually, everything went perfectly uh, perfectly smoothly, which was awesome. And the very last portion involved putting the uh, 90 degree bends on the uh, top portion, which we'll get here shortly, uh, which is where the counterbalance weight was. Um, so that went really well, followed the plans using a wood block and a soft place, soft face hammer, um, getting those, uh, those edges bent. And then did actually go ahead and throw a rivet right dead center between the two screws, um, just because I did have a little bit of pillowing in the skin there. Um, but overall, really, uh, really happy with the results. Looking forward to moving on to the next portion, getting this horizontal stabilizer done. And yeah, if you made it this far, really appreciate you watching. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit the subscribe button, notification bell, all those things. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching all the way to the end here. And we'll see you in the next one. Adios.